All right, it looks like we are live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to City Builders. My name is Anne, and I will be your host for today's panel. And I would like to begin by gratefully acknowledging that Science World is located on the traditional and unceded lands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil First Nations. So we'll start today with a quick introduction from our amazing group of mentors, followed by a hosted discussion. If you have any questions for the mentors at all, please feel free to put those in the chat at any time. So our technician today is Jenny, who will be monitoring the chat. If you have any technical issues, they would be happy to assist. And we also ask that you keep comments in the chat and question section respectful and relevant to the topics being discussed. Okay. So now it's time to meet our mentors. So let's start by going around and doing a brief introduction before we jump into the questions. So you should see Jesse, Susan, and Phyllis on your screen right now. Perfect. So can we get each of you to let us know your name, your job title, and one thing that you love most about your career? Um, anyone can start. I'll start. Uh, so hello, everyone. My name is Jesse Neal. I am currently a project manager working in construction. I uh, went to school for civil engineering. And uh, the best part of my job is traveling. Uh, we, I work all over the country. So all the different cool places I get to see. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Phyllis Chong, and currently I'm the program head of civil engineering at BCIT. Um, my background is in bridge engineering, so I did that for a number of years before I went into teaching. Um, my favorite thing currently about engineering is the ability to um, make others excited about pursuing engineering as a career. Hello, hi, uh, my name is uh, Susan Tan. Uh, I work with uh, BC Hydro uh, in a group called Energy Planning. Uh, I manage a team called Resource Integration, uh, consists of a group of specialist engineers and policy specialists. Um, so we support uh, BC Hydro's development of our long-term energy planning to ensure there's sufficient uh, resources to meet our future electricity uh, demand. Um, one thing I love about my job is um, I can apply my skills to uh, to the field where it actually has impact on people's daily life. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I'm definitely very, very excited to be here with such, you know, inspiring women. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to listen to all of your stories. So now is the time where we'll open up the floors for questions from the chat. So if you have any burning questions for our wonderful mentors right now, feel free to pop them in the chat now. Otherwise, I also have some questions. Okay, I think my first question for everyone and anyone can take this. Um, how did you get started in your career? I can start. So I never thought I would go into engineering. And I think that's also because I just wasn't exposed to it. I don't have parents that were engineers. As a girl, I didn't really always think it was a place for me. Um, but I uh, was just trying to save money to go traveling. So I was in and out of university, not sure what I wanted to do. Um, I was trying sciences, Spanish. I was just jumping all over the place. And then I would work in construction just to save money to go traveling. And then it just clicked like, I. I could go back to school and do engineering. I could do this. And I loved it. I loved um, the like seeing designs come to life in construction. So I kind of never thought that I'd end up here, but that's how I ended up. I love that so much. Sometimes just the best things happen to us when we're, yeah. when we least expect them. Thank you so much, Jesse. My my start is a, a little bit similar to Jesse's. I actually never thought about becoming an engineer either. And same same thing. I didn't have anybody in my family who was an engineer, and I was not exposed to engineer as a career even. Um, but I did very much enjoy all of the 
STEAM topics, um, particularly sciences when I was um, going through school. So I knew I wanted to do something to do with sciences and in particular physics. And so um, when I was in grade I think it was grade 11 and grade 12, I had a physics teacher who actually um, did engineering, but he did not do civil engineering. He did engineering physics. And he said, you know, you might be good at that. And that was really the first time I even heard about what it means to to be an engineer. And so I looked into it and I actually thought I was going to be an architect. And then once I started in looking at different options, I decided, you know, I actually am not that creative. Um, I think I want to be on the science end of buildings, which led me to civil engineering. So that's kind of how I got started. Oh, that's so funny. I love that so much. So yeah, it seems we all kind of get into our career organically in a way. Um, for myself, I, um, I, I grow up, I'm, I'm really good at math and physics and other science topics. And so I know I kind of will get into like STEM field. Uh, but I have been debating for a while between becoming, you know, a medical doctor uh, or, or engineer, like, you know, typical Asian family. I think that's the two careers that we only know about, I guess. Um, on the day I recall, like, this, uh, uh, like I really need to make a decision and um, I had to attend a, a, a biology, like I still remember it till today, like a biology course where I had to dissect a frog. That was a horrible, horrible experience. <laughs> and so I quickly made up my mind that's probably not the field for me. And so I went to, to become an engineer. And I, I see <laughs> till today, um, I'm still telling people, one thing we really need to know for a career is to know something you actually hate and you need to avoid. Um, that can help us to kind of shape our career as well. <laughs> that's wonderful. Oh my gosh. I, I, Oh, sorry, I think someone's at the door. So if you hear beeping, I apologize. Um, but I was gonna say, I've never dissected a frog before. I think I've dissected like a cow's heart and it scarred me for life. So I feel you, Susan. <laughs> awesome. And thank you for your comment, Jenny. Yes, if anyone have any questions for our wonderful mentors, please feel free to post them in the chat and we will get to your questions. Um, otherwise, I have another question. I'm really using this opportunity to ask all of my questions. Um, just because we're talking, you know, about the courses that we've been taking or the courses that we took um, earlier in our academic career, what kind of schooling did you need to do to, you know, have your current career? So for me personally, um, I went to do a bachelor's of engineering and I did that specifically in civil engineering. And then I actually pursued a master's in civil engineering, specializing in structural engineering. Um, so when I was doing a, a lot of bridge engineering work, that was um, probably a, a good amount of education to have. Um, and then now also going into the education field, I think that that's probably a, a good amount. Um, you can always do more. You you continue to learn actually throughout your um, entire lifetime. So you, just because you're not in school, you're not, you're not stopping your, your learning. Mm -hmm. I agree. I did not do a master's. I uh, I did my undergrad. So again, I started in university just taking all the generic science courses. I knew I loved science and math, but I had no idea what direction I wanted to take. And then after a few years, kind of in and out of university, uh, I got accepted into civil engineering. So I did my undergrad. I started yeah. working right after my undergrad and I, I haven't gone back. That's wonderful. I'm also an undergrad. So that makes me feel so much better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What yeah, I yeah yeah. For myself, I um I actually got my uh, bachelor degree of uh, electrical engineering from China. Um, I come to Canada uh, to pursue my master's degree and decide to stay. Um, so yeah, for myself, I really see uh, you know to be successful in this career and be an engineer, the continuation uh, continuous education is definitely um, you know way more important than what we you know, learned at school. 
Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I definitely agree. I feel like um, we can pursue, obviously, you know, our education, higher up education, but ultimately you learn the most when you're actually working. Um, and I think that brings me to my qu next question. What kind of, I guess, what skill set do you think has helped you the most in your career? This is an interesting one um, because for me, and I am so glad you asked this question, Anne, is um, not anything technical. It's actually communication skills. It's, um, you know, how you come across and how do you even like how you talk to somebody, how you are able to express what it is that you've actually, you know, um, conceptually formulated in your mind, right? Like without that, um, honestly, you're not going to be much because you can have all these brilliant ideas, but if you're not going to be able to, you know, present them either graphically or like orally or, um, or in a report format, then you're going to probably struggle with, with, um, anything that you do, not just your career. Mm -hmm. I, I would, I, I would agree. I, I think the biggest thing, and, and for me, I, I don't work in an office. I, I work mostly out on job sites. So like with, but I think no matter where you are in your career, what you're doing, teamwork is huge. So how you work with your team, um, how you manage people, um, how just working well with the team is the, is the biggest thing for me in construction. Um, and then problem solving, being like innovative and excited to solve problems, like trying to think of new ways to do things. I think that's like a big skill and it's not a technical thing we learned in school, but just, yeah, just learning to problem solve and try. And if you, I feel like engineering's for you, if you enjoy that piece of it is being innovative and trying to find new ways that that's the, my favorite part. So. Yeah, I cannot agree more. And just to add that um, the, you know, being an engineer uh, depends on we, you know, where you are at a st different stage of your career. Um, I think different skill sets are, you know, important required. I would see where I am today. I see, you know, the skill being able to drill down to, uh, you know, the technical details, detail levels, and then bring it up to uh, using one of my um, VP's uh, comments, like you have to explain to an eighth grader uh, in five sentences. And so that's what I see the, the skills that really propelled my career. Um, and, and I think generally, um, I, I still love like the, you know, the skill sets kind of lay out in the, uh, in the seven habits, like Steve called these seven habits, and even just like the thinking, the mindset, think wing-wing, um, you know, first thing first, and those are all, you know, still very much helpful to me. Um, you know, I read it, but probably 20 years ago, still very much valid. <laughs> That's definitely very insightful. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people, I guess, hyper focus on just people's academic career instead of the actual skill set that they have. So communication skills, you know, being able to really, in a very organized way, plan your action plans um, and all that good stuff still very important. All right. Okay. Um, again, if anyone has any questions at all, our mentors are very happy to answer them. So feel free to drop your questions in the comments if you have any. Okay. Hmm. I think something that I've always wanted to ask you all even though we just met like an hour ago but something that i've been like holding on to this question because i'm very curious but i want it to be live i want it to be recorded um what kind of advice would you give to middle schoolers or high schoolers who are interested in your line of work who's gonna go first <laughs> You can go first, Jesse. I, um, <laughs> I I wish that more people told me when I was fourteen that as a as a, a girl I could go out in construction with my hard hat and my boots and and be accepted by the team because I haven't been held back. I have a lot of great mentors. I feel like it, I'm in a safe place. I love my teams. I've had equal opportunities, and um, I of course there's always challenges, but like I, I wish more people would have told me 
I wish I would have been exposed more to engineering, I think, when I was 14. And maybe I'm just getting older and hopefully the group listening is exposed to it more. But I, I wish more people would have told me I could I could go into construction and 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 do this as an engineer. So um, my advice would be don't don't let that hold you back because you will have equal opportunity. And it, it, whether you decide to be an engineer designing and or out in construction, um, there is so many opportunities for and we need diverse groups like that. And that's the thing too, when I pick my team, I need them to be diverse because you don't need all the same ki kinds of people and thinkers. So um, I guess I always had this idea of what it was to be in construction and the type of person, and it's not true. It, that's not what makes a good team in construction, so. I think that's very reassuring for a lot of folks here. Thank you so much, Jesse. I mean, I live up in a camp most of my life with almost with a lot of men <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. And I I love it. it. There's more than enough opportunities for all different types of people. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I know it maybe sounds cliche, but I think like just um, think that you know, like you can do anything that you put your mind to. Um, but I think to add to that, I would, the, the piece of advice I would give is just to keep an open mind and don't be afraid mm -hmm. of change because just because you went into something thinking that you're going to go down this certain path, if along the way you think that it actually will fit you better or it'll be like a healthier choice or, you know, you're going to be able to get more out of it while giving more of yourself or, um, you know, something that you didn't start off doing. I think that that's, like a great choice as well. Like, just don't be afraid to say that, oh, you know, maybe I didn't make the right choice before and I'm going to, you know, pursue something different. Right. So um, I think that I that love that. I feel like that I can relate to that so much. Like when I was 18, I didn't know. I knew I had to go to university and do something. And then I was doing chemistry and I think, God, I would have hated to work in a chem lab. And part of me almost finished my degree in chemistry because I was like, well, I'm already two years in and, and I'm not enjoying it, but I got to finish. And I'm so glad I started again and did engineering. I'm so glad. So like, I feel like there's so much pressure to know what you want to do when you're 18, but you don't need to know. You can, you can try different courses and, and change your mind. Like I was scared that, oh, I was going to be too old when I graduated, but it didn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Just, just want to add that um, um, really, um, you know, like I find this is, the career is actually a journey of knowing ourselves. And so be true to yourself. Um, and there are always, you know, shiny things along the way, right? Like, is that really what you want? Or is actually what, you know, others want you to want it? So um, it's, um, I think, I think that's important. And also, uh, I find, um, you know, again, I wish somebody told me um, to really explore and consciously building your network. I know, you know, maybe now you're not really thinking about your professional network, but really go out and, you know, look at the LinkedIn, um, attend uh, some of the universities like UBC, SFU, put up a lot of uh, free webinars and, and really reach out and, mm -hmm. and don't afraid of, you know, exploring. Oh, I love that all so much. Oh my gosh, even for me, that's so reassuring. Um, Cause yeah, I definitely understand all of the pressure that a lot of, you know, folks have to go through um, when they're at like 11th grade, 12th grade, where they're thinking about college and thinking about what they have to do or what they think they want to do for the rest of their life. So just, you know, reminding ourselves that we do have time, we can explore, we can, you know, explore ourselves, what we're interested in as well as the different fields. Um, yeah. And also making sure that we're doing the things that we're really passionate about and not just the things that, you know, other people think would be best for us. I mean, that's, you've all said it so beautifully. Okay. Again, folks, if you have any questions at all, our mentors won't bite, I hope. <laughs> so if you have any questions at all, feel free to drop them in the chat and we will definitely get to your questions. Okay. All right. Something else that I've always been curious about, because I'm, I'm really interested in engineering, but I'm not an engineer, is what does your typical day look like at work? I think all three of us are going to have different answers, so this should be good. <laughs> Exciting. 
someone else go first. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can probably go first. And um, again, I find uh, that's a really broad question and ask. And I think even a quote unquote engineer, uh, it can be at different stage of your careers and at different groups within even BC Hydro as a company. Um, our daily life could be quite different. For me, where I am today, um, I'm managing you know a team with you know, engineers and policy specialists. We do long term planning. I would say um, my, you know, probably fifty percent or over fifty percent of my time is 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 managing issues associated with, you know, social issues, environmental, uh, regulatory, um, and not so much the hardcore like engineering <laughs> calculations or anything, and um, uh, financial uh, finance and budgeting. Uh, uh, it's also part of my my role these days. Well, I never knew engineering is so holistic. And then I guess I, I should have known, but for some reason I didn't. Maybe um, uh, maybe I'll go next and I will, I, I guess I'm going to cheat a little bit because I'm not going to tell you about my normal day now because my normal day now is not that glamorous. Um, but maybe I'll cheat and tell you a little bit about um, when I was in the bridge engineering industry. Um, one of my normal days may be looking at, and this was back when I was actually working on the Golden Years bridge project. So when the Golden, before the Golden Years was being built, um, I actually worked for quite a number of years on that project. And um, one of my days might look like looking at uh, computer modeling for the behavior of the bridge as it was being built. So we looked at stuff like, um, how do you persist, position certain weights on the bridge as it's being built so that it'll be balanced and to get the you know the shape of the bridge that you really want to see um we might be looking at things like um how much force to pull on the cables that they're hanging every day and how that is going to help you control again the the geometry of the bridge um so that would have been one of my days back when i was working in industry in in bridge building and and that i think is something that's really exciting because um, you actually get to see that. And then, um, you know, we'll send that information out to the construction site and then somebody out there um, from the contractors group will be able to tell us, okay, yeah, it's behaving exactly as you told us it is, which, which would be a fantastic day, right? So um, luckily we had a lot of fantastic days and the bridge is out there now. I think probably most of you have um, been on the Golden Years Bridge before, um, but that would be something that I, I would think is a, a, it's a really fun thing to do for for a day so phyllis we're kind of like on the two different sides the design and then the contractor side but um uh on the bridge side a fun fact is i have i spent november and december up in hope bc which if anyone listening knows anything what happened up there with the flooding i was one of the people trapped in hope and we flew we stayed up there for two months and uh and we were the ones re rebuilding the bridges so we were up there rebuilding all the bridges on the Coca-Cola Highway over the last two months. So it was a crazy two months, but really cool flying in helicopters to work to try and get these bridges put back together. So Phyllis would have been the one designing. I wasn't designing, but we were out building. <laughs> so um, a typical day for me, um, it changes a lot um, from project to project. Um, I would say half of my days in an office and half of my days in a hard hat in the field. So I manage a team of uh, about 30 people and um uh, and a mix of engineers and builders and and then um we uh i would say between financials meetings and uh, design coordination um probably half of my days in the office but the best part of my days in the field so i'm out there uh working with uh, design engineers and we are trying to fix problems in the field make field fixes um and then we're building so um yeah that's kind of it depends on the project uh the best part of i think working in engineering or construction is it's never the same so from each job you go to it's different sometimes you're more in the field and sometimes you're more in the office and as you grow in your career you can kind of choose which direction you want to take so if you enjoy the design side or the financial side or you like being out in the field there's so many different paths you can take so for me, I'm kind of a mix in the middle. I'm managing a, a scope where 
where I do a bit in the field and a bit in the office. So that's wonderful. What I'm hearing, there's never a dull moment in your no. job. No, that's wonderful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be flying to work in a helicopter, putting bridges back together <laughs> 20, 24 hours a day in November. No. <laughs> and and I think what you, Jesse, said, and also what Susan said, I think it's similar before too. It's that you have so many choices after like, you know, maybe when you're starting out, you do have to put in the work, right? But after that, there are so many directions that you could take, right? You could work in, you know, building like the, the business side of the of the company, or you can be, you know, more managing a team like a line manager, or you could be out in construction sites, or you could be, you know, looking at an office job with analysis and things like that. And, and that's kind of exciting, too. And, and a lot of places does allow you the opportunity to kind of work a mix of those tasks. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, just out of curiosity, I know that, or at least for me, I'm I'm at UBC. I've always heard rumors of like engineering students having to take six, seven courses a term, full course load. They have to like stay awake for twenty four seven studying for their midterms or exams or building whatever project they're building. Did you have, or do you have any? I guess keys to success or keys to getting through the heavy engineering workload at school? This is probably a really good question for Phyllis. <laughs> I'll start and you can chime in as well. Well, both Jesse and Susan. Um, it, yes, it, it is a heavy workload. Like I think there's no way around it. I think for us being an engineer, we all know it's a heavy workload, but I think that also prepares you um, to be not just a better engineer, but a better person um, in the future, because and you're able to, you know, look into prioritization and, you know, like looking at time management and mm -hmm. um, things like that. But the one key that I want to point out, and, and it actually helps in all facets of life, and it's something that we sort of alluded to already, is work with other people, collaborate, right? Like build a team. And I think that it makes a big difference. Um, if you see students that are involved with, you know, a bigger group of students that are supporting each other, helping each other out, um, you like can basically, um, you know, work faster, but at the same time, you're also exposed to all of that different viewpoints and, and, you know, like different ways to, to actually solve a problem. And I think that that is something that's going to be extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else want to add to that? I think like, I think back to university and like, I remember it being a really heavy workload, but it goes back to really like enjoying what you do. And, and like, I loved a lot of the courses, um, but you're always going to have courses you hate <laughs> that you just have to mm -hmm. get through. And my friends that I met in university, I didn't go to school with any friends. I didn't go out of high school. So I made new friends in university and that was a huge part of it. And you grind through and it goes by so fast. It's over before you know it. <laughs> and yeah, there's some late nights, but you have to really enjoy it. Yeah, I, uh, just to add on to it, uh, yeah, I, I, I find passion is, is something important to kind of sustain or underline that, uh, uh, you know, go through the, the, the tough work. Um, and, and I say, well, overall, um, I find really helped me is I, I know like what I'm studying is actually linked with some real life work, like, you know, like problems I can solve, like if I, um, you know, back to what uh, a few minutes ago I was talking about exploring, like, you know, get up to date of, you know, the latest um, fun stuff um, uh, in the news or in a, or in a magazine or article. And you will actually be able to link like the fundamental things we're learning at school is actually important for uh, to, to address uh, real life issues. And I, I find that's, uh, that's one of uh, at least my drivers mm -hmm. able to get me through. Yeah, it's definitely, I guess, helpful to know that all the courses that you're taking and everything that you're learning at school is applicable. Um, and it's not just pure theory. Thank you so much. Um, obviously, you're all very successful, despite the, you know, heavy workload. Were there any people that or who inspired you or helped you along the way? either at Always. school or in your career? 
Always. I think everybody has to have mentors. <laughs> I have lots of mentors that I call. And it's actually interesting. When I became a project manager for the first time, I freaked out. And I was like, I, I don't know if I'm ready for this. I can't do it. I don't even really know this type of work. And and my director sat me down and he was like, what are you nervous about? What are the 15 things as an engineering manager you're going to need to know? And I was like listing them out. And I was like, I only know five. I don't know all 15. And he was like, name someone you've met in your career that you could call up and they could answer no matter what and give you help. So it's like, the best managers, the most successful people call a friend. You don't have answers for everything. You don't need to know everything. And so I rely on my mentors all the time still. <laughs> I totally agree. I still call people up all the time, not just technically, but also like now that I'm the program head, I actually call um, one of my retired colleagues who was the program head like a few years ago. And I'll be like, you know, I ran into this thing. I just want to run it by you. Like sometimes it's not like a right or wrong answer. Sometimes you just need somebody to support you and, 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 you know, to share your thoughts. Right. And so I think it's really important. And, and so I think that a big part of engineering that is so, um, welcoming is that um, a lot of engineers are more than happy to be mentors and once you get started there you will see that like you know all like you can find so many good resources and so many good um you know people to talk to and work with and support you yeah mentors are definitely important in our career and uh, i would like to also add um find your sponsors as well and um get to um you know really spot people who can actually spot your talent and trust mm -hmm. in you and be able to advocate for you uh one of my um you know uh when i first joined bc hydro as i just said like i i, I come to canada like about 20 years ago uh, when i first joined um, bc hydro um i can you know I have broken English and, and yes, I can do my job, but I probably not be able to, you know, make this the best presentation to the UT. And um, my team lead um, assigned me um, the downtown Vancouver um, area plan. That was a big deal. And like, I was really doubt myself when he actually trusted in me. Um, so till today, um, I feel very much appreciate um, having, you know, I call it sponsor, um, can really see talent in you. Um, and, and I find that's quite helpful. That's wonderful. Yeah. Having, a, I guess, having a strong support system and having, you know, resources that you can tap into having the people who are there to support you. And like all of you said, people who can see, your potential, despite the fact that you can't even see your own potential. Having those people in your life are just so important. Um, and don't ever be scared to ask someone to be your mentor. So when I was younger and I first started, I was shyer and quiet. And I would like think that the Susans of the world were too busy to um, mentor me. And I didn't ask at first. And I and I wish I would have been more confident because like, I promise you that ev almost everybody is going to be OK being your mentor and be excited to mentor you. So it's like, I wish I would have just gone and knocked on more people's doors at work and been like, asked for advice or created stronger relationships. I was quiet at first, so. Were there, or I guess just because we're talking about mentors, how did you find your mentors or who did you, or how did you decide who to ask to be your mentors, if that makes sense? I think for me, it just kind of happened naturally it's usually people that i want to be like right like so i feel like they have something that i look up to and aspire to be and and also um they would have knowledge that i think is going to help me be a better person a better engineer and so i think usually like just uh, along the way it might be like, I think my first mentor was my physics teacher that I talked about that actually directed me towards engineering. And then the next one was my um, professor um, at university. And then after that, it was one of my project managers. And, and then it would be like another one of my colleagues, right? Like, so it just happens naturally as you like progress along your path, you meet these people and you think mm -hmm. that, you know, like these people are really um, somebody who's going to like 
Susan mentioned, bring you up and also like make you the best person you can be. And, and I think that that's important. And, and then it just happens naturally. I agree with that. I, mine have just come organically. And, and I have different types of mentors that I go to for different things. I have some of my bosses that I go to for technical questions and I have some female project managers I go to when I'm trying to understand and navigate my personal life and my work life balance. So I think it's, it depends. So. Yeah. To add on to that, I find, um, uh, these days, um, I'm actually consciously trying to find someone who, who are not in my close work environment. Uh, but I, I know that person, um, I respect that person's opinion, um, but that person may or may not directly involve my daily work and can actually, um, you know, I call them a coach, right? Like they hold the mirror in front of you um, instead of telling you have dirt on your face, um, they just hold the mirror. And, and you can tell yourself, like, and I, I find that's helpful. So in the end, whatever solution coming out is actually my own idea, but I need that sounding board. That's such a beautiful analogy. I'm gonna start using that from now on. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for sharing, Susan. Um, it looks like we are almost at time. Uh, so if, again, any last minute questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Otherwise, I have one last question for everyone. My burning, burning question. I think this is also everyone's burning question. Did you have to be a math genius or a science whiz to get your job? Mm -hmm. Anyone can start. That's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard That's question. It. It's a hard question because I also feel like, okay, so I can't lie about it. I was pretty good at math and I was pretty good at the sciences. That's what I was good at. And, and I think that's kind of what drove me to be an engineer, but I don't actually think it's because I knew I could do it because I was good at this. It was my passion was in doing science and that's why I was good at it. So I, I think I'm going to just leave it at that for my contribution. I don't, I'm not sure that you have to be good at it, but I'm not going to lie and say I wasn't. Um, <laughs> but I think it was the passion for this type of work that, that led me to be good at these subjects. I, I would say you just cannot hate math and physics, like <laughs> get to my earlier comments that when we choose our career, um, we really have to know what we do not like. And uh, in the world of engineering, um, you know, math and physics, like science, fundamentals are still there, um, but that's not, definitely not the only <laughs> uh, factor will drive a successful engineering career. And towards, I would say, you know, latter part of your career, you might realize that's definitely not even the most important factor is many, many other things will um, drive a successful engineering career. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think you have to like math and physics and you have to be good at it. I don't think you have to be a genius. I think um, don't scare yourself away from engineering just because you're not like getting 95% in grade 11. Like, I think when you go into your first year of university and you try some engineering classes, like it might click in a different way. Like you might not be the best at algebra. That doesn't mean you can't be an engineer. You can go, if you're innovative and you problem solve, that type of math might click better for you. And that clicked better for, for me. And once you start like building and, and analyzing and understanding like structural um, design, it, it makes the math a little bit more fun in my opinion. So I think if you're not like a math genius in, in high school, it doesn't mean you can't be an engineer, but you do need to like math. <laughs> I, I think that's a very, very good distinction. You don't have to yeah. be a genius. You just have to like it and be passionate about it. Awesome. All right. It looks like we are almost at time. We have less than one minute left. So I'd like to thank you for joining us today and a huge thanks as well to our wonderful mentors for sharing their time and experiences with us. So we will now have a bio break and a bit of time to explore our interactive virtual booth. You can access the booth through the exhibit hall.
button at the top of the page in Project Board. And then the next session will start at 6 p.m. PST, so around 20 minutes. So be sure to pick out where you want to go next. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.